Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q3 FI 2023-2024 earnings call of Sartak Metals Limited, hosted by Alpha Street. This is Radha Krishna Chonat from Alpha Street, and it's a pleasure to host Sartak Metals Limited for their quarterly earnings results conference call. From the management, we have Mr. Sagar Shah, Vice President and part of the promoter group. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, today's call is being recorded. For professional investors, we are live streaming this audio along with the AI generated transcript on our alphastreet.com platform. A replay audio of this call will be made available on alphastreet.com's platform as well as on our Alpha Street India YouTube channel. A final transcript will be made available shortly afterwards on Alpha Street Intelligence platform. With that said, may I now request Mr. Sagar Shah to take you through the presentation. And post that, we can start with the Q&A session. Over to you, Mr. Sagar. Yeah, thank you, RC. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is heartwarming to see a good set of participation from our investor community. Last few months have been exciting times for us with our new initiatives in the field of lux code wires and biotechnology. I am sure you are excited like us and eager to know more about the existing as well as the new projects. Before we begin, a light on forward-looking statements and disclaimers. Certain matters discussed in our Q3 pre investor presentation may contain statements regarding the company's market opportunity and business prospects that are individually and collectively forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements are not guarantees of future performance and are subject to known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that are difficult to predict. For those who have joined us for the first time, a little introduction of our core business. We have two main lines of business, code wire and the aluminum flipping coil segment. Code wires are a substitute to single shot addition of alloys into molten metal. Code wire helps in uniform and homogeneous mixing of alloys in the ladle and have become an indispensable part of metallurgical plants today. Our major clients are leading steel manufacturers, including Tata Steel, Jindal, and JSW, with whom we have long-term relationships. Besides, we have got orders from foundries and fabrication units from different sectors of our company. Our second line of business is aluminum flipping coil. They are used in steel manufacturing processes for deoxidizing of molten steel and as an alloying element for manufacturing specialized steel. Our code wire did a business of rupees 28 crores in December quarter. Both price realizations and volume of take were down due to combination of factors. Our aluminum flipping coil business in turn posted a revenue of rupees 36 crores. We managed to increase the sales in aluminum in order to utilize our inventory in the most efficient manner. Our revenues in total were down 19% to rupees 75 crores in the quarter 3, 24, financial year 24 on a year-to-year -year basis and 3% down on a sequential basis. Our EBITDA margins were highly affected due to low sales of uh, high value and high margin products in the code wire segment and mainly due to the painful commodity uh, pricing cycle in the aluminium segment. Our finance cost was rupees 33 lakhs for the quarter up on a sequential and year on year basis. PAT was at 1.72 crores. Okay. Now, friends, as you could see, your company went through a roller coaster ride in the recent days. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel and I take your permission now to present you the vision ahead for a robust growth of your company. Talking about, talking about flux wire code segment, we have successfully taken trial runs and produced a total of 500 spools, giving us confidence in our technology adoption. The grant of the BI certificate was a, was a big leap ahead for us and getting rapid approvals from different customers from different sectors is giving us the confidence that we need. We are now targeting to get all the necessary government approvals for the railway sector as we see a lot of traction and tailwind in that segment. Talking about biotechnology, 
फ्रेंड्स वी आर प्लीज टू अनाउंस द लॉन्च ऑफ द न्यू इंडस्ट्रियल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी डिविजन ऑफ योर कंपनी बीइंग सेंट्रली लोकेटेड इन द हार्ट ऑफ इंडिया वी आर कॉन्फिडेंट ऑफ अ वेरी सक्सेसफुल वेंचर ऑन दिस आर आर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू क्रिएट अ ग्लोबल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हब इन द एरियाज ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल बायो एंजाइम्स एंड अलाइड हेल्थ केयर न्यूट्रिशन एंड डाइटरी सप्लीमेंट्स टू अचीव दिस we have already tied up with csir laboratory for technology transfer on enzymes we are also closely working with reputed local institutes of national importance like lit university and hislop college for standardization and domestication of licensed csir technologies at our plant that will further catalyze the growth process we have already hired some key technical people and still hiring skilled manpower for the project the proposed manufacturing facility will be a showcase in the field focusing on both solid state and submerged processes on enzyme engineering the facility will also house a natural pulse protein isolation facility mainly utilizing locally available pulses like chana to produce protein isolates for the global market thereby creating the first step towards healthcare nutrition products and dietary supplements the proposed complex will also have a state of the art multi product multi purpose interdisciplinary scalable advanced pilot processing facility to help isolation formulation and efficacy evaluations of active ingredients and allied molecules for overall holistic healthcare applications we had a promising stall at the recently com- completed advantage vidarb exhibition a brain child of honorable union minister mr nitin ji gadkari who himself having spent quality time at our stall is convinced on the project the flagship product of our manufacturing facility will play a key role for the ambitious 2g ethanol project of government of india the government of india has advanced the ethanol blending program in petrol from 2030 to 2025 india in the coming times will require staggering 1000 crore liters of of ethanol including 100 crore liters of 2g ethanol by the year 2025 2026 your manufacturing facility is getting geared up to play a major role on 2g ethanol talking about the overall global market size the enzymes hold in excess of rupees 75000 crores including 30000 crores of protease 16000 crores of cellulose 10000 crore of phytase and including many other enzymes which are steadily growing at a cagr of more than 6% however with lower penetration of indian players in the global market experts in the field predict a growth trajectory of around more than 10% cagr for industrial enzymes and around 15% cagr for overall healthcare nutrition products and dietary supplements friends the vision of your company is clear for the days to come is it, it is to focus on enzymes for 2g ethanol breweries and distilleries detergents textile and leather animal nutrition food processing and industrial waste water which are few names in the vast category of enzyme application at the same time your company is also going to focus on overall holistic healthcare solutions including high protein nutrition formulations from natural resources like pulses dietary supplements prebiotics like oligosaccharides probiotics and similar other allied formulations in this regard accordingly your company plans to invest to the tune of approximately rupees 100 crores that will ultimately generate sales of approximately rupees 350 crores with a gross margin of approximately 30% starting with around approximately 10 crores in the initial stage with now i would i would like to open up the q and a session thank you mr sagar we'll now move into our question and answer session 
Today we have uh, participants joining via the webinar platform and also via our uh, telecalling platform. Participants who have uh, joined us and connected with us through the webinar platform can post their questions directly to me on the chat box and we'll ask the questions on your behalf. Alternatively, if you wish to ask a question directly, please use the raise hand functionality. I'll take the first few questions from the chat box as well as questions we have received by our email and through our Alpha Street platform. And then we'll open it up for participants to ask questions directly. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please use the raise hand functionality if you would want to ask a question directly to Sartak Metals Management or use the chat box. I'll start with the first set of questions that we have received by our email through our platform and through the chat windows. The first question is, can you tell us about the competitive edge the company has in the flex code wire segment? Okay, yeah. So I will keep it very crisp and short. The technological edge, firstly, the adaption of the technology, not everyone has it. We're, we're amongst the pioneers in that segment. And secondly, very importantly, the location. We are so strategically located around big fabrication houses who are filled, filled up with uh, big order books. Thank you, Sagar. The next question is, can you give a brief of the current order book your company has in the FlexCore wire segment? Uh, it is actually a little soon to uh, reveal that because we are in the process of getting rapid approvals as of now. And uh, yeah, I will, I will reveal, we, we would reveal that in the coming times. Thank you, Sagar. We have one more question. Is going forward, does the company intend to diversify in other metal sectors as well? Mm, no plan as of now. No, we are, we are anyway very occupied with the two major ventures we have taken up. Thank you, Sagar. Next question is, could you provide more details on the company's uh, exploration of opportunities in the biotechnology field that you just gave an update about? Biotech field is our top focus area right now. Our aim is to gain credibility firstly in the area of alternate energy resources where enzymes play a vital role. We already have the technology in hand for a very green initiative by the government of India, which is the 2G blending program, and our product will play a crucial role over there. Our vision is very clear. It is to build a healthcare segment within the biotechnology division. The next question is, how optimistic is the leadership about the company's performance in the field of biotechnology? especially considering the great potential for uh, small players in the biotech industry? Uh, we are we are definitely highly optimistic. If, if the people joining this call have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, been in our earlier calls also, they might know that we are very um, bullish when we finally venture into a segment. So it's the same with biotechnology also. We have given enough time and enough research into this area and we feel there is there is massive growth opportunities over here immense number of opportunities to explore and expand so we are on it and moreover the government government is like uh, fully focused on sustainable future ahead and i feel the government jaha apna sarkar ka aaj ke date mein hath hai wo Thank you, Sagar. Let me um, uh, take a few questions directly from sure, the sure. audience. Um, Garvit Goel, operator, can you please allow him to ask a question? Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, Garvit, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, starting with uh, management's earlier guidance, so uh, given the management's previous uh, indication of the uh, rising inventory levels and the uh, expectations for a, a stronger performance uh, in H2 as compared to H1, 
but the actual uh, reported revenue uh, in first nine months is 236 crores uh, which is significantly uh, below the guided target of 400 crores per full year and additionally if you observe the opm percentage uh, that is uh, com- in comparison to the guidance earlier given that is also raises a concern for us so uh, can the management provide a detailed explanation for the substantial deviation from the rbs guidance what are the factors that contributed to this uh, significant downturn and what are the corrective measures that we are looking for in our existing business so hi yeah so very valid question uh, firstly the uh, realizations of these products are hurting us a lot we are uh, we are ourselves facing the heat of the uh, global tensions and that would be a major cause why the prices of our products aren't rising like these are very these have become very volatile and very cyclical and especially in the area of aluminum because of the heavily disrupted supply and demand chain the raw material prices of aluminum have been very steady and in a rising uh, rising uh, uh, graph in like while while our selling price of a finished product have been falling the sub, the uh, the prices of our raw material have been rising which is which is really hurting our margins and uh, even the top line of our company because of the lower realizations and that is that is the absolute truth in this area we have been uh, considering or or i would say we have been we have been uh, taking these rates as as the bottom bottom of of the uh, like uh, chart but but somehow the rates aren't bouncing back that i agree but my question is particularly on the demand side like you are uh, you are mentioning in your presentation as well we are gaining the market share but at the same time you are saying that we are uh, losing on the real uh, pricing power and all these things but uh, you are also saying that raw material prices are increasing but we are not able to pass on the same so what kind of competitive edge do we talking uh, are we talking about and how we are uh, Uh, down uh, sorry how we are your 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 voice how got cracked down uh, that how we are saying that we are gaining on the market share despite our volumes are not saying uh, this uh, not confirming uh, this fact so if you if you notice the sales parameter in the terms of code wire domestically speaking has been muted there is no change in the sale of uh, code wires while when while when we talk about uh, aluminum segment we have uh, we have increased our sales by almost 20% when compared on quarter to quarter the overall demand side i would say is still uh, still very uh, like flattish i wouldn't say there is uh, it's bearish the output is like okay from the steel plants but it is not but it is not like heavily demanded our products are not heavily demanded as of now and and it's a fact that steel steel market is cyclical right now it's still in its downturn but steel prices are i Thank think you, steel Gar- prices Gar- garvit i request you to limit yourself to two questions we'll come back again we have a few more questions the next uh, is from the line of utkarsh somaiya operator please allow him to ask a question Hi Utkarsh, uh, go ahead and please. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the gross margin of the company. Uh, I think uh, the major reduction in your operating margins was due to your gross margin, and we haven't seen such low gross margins in the last many years. So my first question is: uh, Do you see this as just one quarter phenomena, and the same should bounce back in quarter four? or uh, do you expect this to su- sustain for a few more quarters that's my first question mm. so can yeah. i go for the first question or you would like to yeah. state the yeah. second can, question yeah you? can you can can you please uh, answer okay so question. so to answer that i definitely see these uh, uh, gross margins as non sustainable these will definitely uh, grow back to its normal uh, levels but sustainably because and the only reason why uh, uh, the uh, margins have dropped this time mainly aluminum has hurt us a lot and secondly the export of cord wires fell down because of like lower uh, inventories or you know our, our overseas customers have deferred 
from uh, uh, giving us clearances for uh, dispatches so mm-hmm. that is one area but mainly aluminum aluminum needs the aluminum market needs to revive and to get out of that commodity cycle we are we are tackling com- uh, like aluminum by keeping by again coming back to keeping lower inventories okay and how does q4 look in terms of sales trajectory and gross margin honestly sales sales look flatish and in terms of margin i would again state the same thing we need a bit of realization because the product is commoditized aluminum aluminum in specificity has been commoditized and we need a little realization and the global tensions and the supply demand overall disruptions are not allowing aluminum prices to go up these are these are some abnormal levels at which aluminum is trading right now okay and uh, on your utilization can you mm-hmm. tell me your current capacity utilization in your cord wires flux cord wires the aluminum business and the feeder machine business and okay. what will be the peak revenue in each of these at current prices at current price is okay so cord wires we are currently working at a uh, roughly around 60% of uh, capacity utilization and uh, aluminum also i would say 50 to 60% utilization and at mm-hmm. current levels the peak revenue that we could do is approximately 700 to 800 crores at these price levels in both these products yeah and what about your flux cord wires is that separate flux 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 is a, a new segment right now but uh, hmm. i'm uh, i can very confidently say that in the coming quarters we'll be able to uh, utilize 100% of the existing line and wow, what revenue would that yield you on flux cord uh if 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 we utilize the uh, utilize the line 100% the revenue will be approximately one second approximately uh, 4 crores oh 4 crores that yeah. peak yes so is this just a pilot project for you and then you plan to scale it up of course our our plan is to scale it up and we are we are in in advanced stages to uh, consider scaling up and you all will be the first ones to know about it we are very optimistic about the project okay and just one last question regarding your biotech business the enzyme business just wanted to understand what is your right to win in this and are there any barriers to entry sorry could could you repeat so my question is for your entry in the biotech enzyme business are there any barriers to entry in that business and and second question regarding that is what do you think you, you bring special to the table that somebody else wouldn't be able to since so it's a totally a non core segment right for you yes yes it's a new segment for us it is a leap that we took and enzymes are a highly technical area and uh, we are building our credibility in this area of course there are uh, entry barriers which can act as a uh, pro and a con in our case since we have already ventured into this area it is it is a challenge for us right now but we are very confident in terms of having uh, technical collaborations with the government of india itself and uh, starting our journey building our credibility in the area which is controlled by the government itself so 2g mm-hmm. ethanol is a uh, is an area where our flagship product will will be of crucial uh, role and that is how we are building our credibility and using other sectors also we are uh, gaining that momentum much needed so but with respect to barrier to entry how are you able to do this with a background coming from a metal industry and mm-hmm. how is it that you are able to enter into such a non core field by by building by building up a facility which is uh, which will be a showcase to our credibility and the main thing is our our own business experience is the most important thing i have feel 
I feel and uh, venturing into a new area has been a challenge to us, but we are very confident, and we will have to wait and see how it goes. Okay, and just one last question regarding your peak revenue you mentioned. Do you think you'll be able to come anywhere close to that in FI twenty five? It is hard to say. It is hard to predict like that. But definitely, if you have been a key observer of the steel output, you would be very well. You would very well know that it is cyclical. And during, if if during its downturn, if we are able to post a revenue of approximately three hundred to three fifty crores. so during its up cycle we will because rapid expansions have are are happening at all our uh, customer houses and we being the pioneer in this area we have some very solid relationships with them so once once the output and once the demand increases we are very confident of maintaining if not increasing the market share and if the, in that very same market share we'll be able to come very close to 700 crores Okay, and so do you have any pricing power in your products? In the area of uh, code wires, we definitely do, because code wires are are also technical and like we having the expertise, having uh, having in uh, having aligned with the steel steel business since the past two decades. Now we have the expertise to supply the actual uh, mix of. different alloys in the form of code wires to the steel plant so code wires our quality our service gives us that uh, pricing edge but in terms of aluminum it's it's commoditized it's simple conversion okay thank you and best of luck thank you thank you utkarsh the next question is from the line of uh, gagandeep operator please enable him to ask a question directly Hi Gagan, please unmute and go ahead and ask your question. <coughs> Gagan, please unmute yourself. Gagan Deep, I hope you can hear us. Since you have raised your hand, we have allowed you to ask a question. Please. Unmute yourself. All right, operator, please uh, move him to the queue, and let's take a question from Keshav Garg next. Please allow him to ask a question. Mr. Keshav Garg, please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask a question. Hello, uh, sir. Yes. I hope this is audible. Yes, Keshav, go ahead. Uh, sir so regarding this biotech pore sir mm. uh, in uh, previous calls you had mentioned that you are interested in venturing into the chemical side of the business and that too related to uh, the steel industry the, the 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 chemicals that are being required by the steel industry but sir what i understand from your commentary that we are trying to make some kind of enzymes which will go into initially Uh, the uh, bioethanol sir so uh, now that being the case sir so sir now you mentioned that 10 crore will be our initial investment sir so by Correct. when will incur this investment when will it get commissioned and when will the revenue start coming and this 100 crore total investment sir can you give us some kind of road map that by when will we deploy this whole 100 crore and by when can we expect 350 crore top line and when will this division get commissioned and when will it break even mm hmm so hi keshav sir hello hi 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 yeah i am i am audible right yeah yeah hi keshav sir so a uh, very interesting question and uh, in my opening remarks i have quite quite delivered our vision because i wanted to be very clear i know we are uh, venturing into a very different uh, segment that, uh, to when compared to our traditional area so i tried to deliver a, a clear road map ahead of us in that area so yes the 10 crore that you ask uh, that we plan to infuse should be should happen in the uh, next financial year as a whole 
revenues if you ask me revenues should ta- start coming in in the uh, uh, second half of of the next financial year the 100 crore total infusement is is our is our estimate that we would like to put in in the segment because of the potential and because of the promises this industry holds and we we as a company we are we are conservative we like to move in a uh, sustainable manner we like to grow in a sustainable manner if you have also seen in the past even when when i talk about the flux code wire segment we started with one line and we now are in that stage when we are confident to expand that so same way we will do it in the biotechnology area but the promises and the potential that this industry holds is vast so 100 crores is just the first step of the ladder sir and what about the break even sir uh, can the shareholders expect uh, a quick break even or are some initial losses expected i i really don't think any losses are expected we are pure businessmen and the fact that we ventured into this line is to create a technological uh, edge for our company we have always been regarded as a metal company and this sector actually gives us uh actually leaves the metal sector at the back seat the metal sector has been our driver of growth since the past two decades and now it is time to to push back and something new to take over and that new had to be something technologically strong so this area holds that technological edge and i truly don't believe that we will incur any losses here uh sure sir uh, so, sir that answer is very much appreciated and uh, sir just one thing sir our uh, the core business of uh, code wire sir if we see mm-hmm. that sir the steel the steel prices may be down but the steel production itself in india is still growing in uh, 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 mid single digit something like 6% correct so, so that being the case sir so why are our volumes falling continuously because the specialized steel output is really low india has been the pioneer in exporting the specialized steel and the specialized steel production requires most of our products and since since india has been facing some heat from the global tensions and the uh, total steel export has been so low these products are also being used in a lower uh, lower form and and second second answer to that keshav sir you have been a part of our previous calls also i would again stick to the same part we do not like to hurt our margins like we did this time and we avoid getting into uh, price battles and we keep out of it because currently the demand is low and uh, supply is like higher Sure, sir. And sir, uh, just one last thing, sir. Uh, like uh, we are mentioning that, uh, so so uh, I, I think sir, last year in third quarter, sir, we did some high margin sales. Uh, yes, sir. So which I'm assuming is not there in the current quarter. Sir, so no. Sir, so uh, is that demand getting deferred or was that just a one time thing, sir? Because I'm uh, thinking that I mean. since our consumers are going into some kind of production so so is that kind of steel has it permanently stopped being manufactured in india so india hasn't hasn't been a great consumer of good quality steel it's a hard pill to swallow but we have learned to learned this the hard way india has been a consumer of low quality steel and when when the term low quality comes into the picture our products consumption at the steel plants gets lower the the previous year and the year previous to that were the years when india was heavily exporting its steel and whenever export terms come comes under picture the steel that is being exported is high quality steel and whenever high quality steel is being made our products of good quality are being used so that's the whole picture 
Sure, sir. So, sir, so basically the, the long and short of it is that once steel exports uh, increase from India big time, then we can see some kind of... Uh, export, uh, uh, export of steels will definitely uh, benefit us, has benefited us in the past and will benefit us in the future also. Sure, sir. Thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kesha, for your questions. The next question is from the line of Anai Metal. Operator, can you allow Anai Metal to ask a question? Hello? Am yes, I Anai. Hello? Yes, okay. go ahead, Anai. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you let me know what is your uh, guidance for this year on FI25? FI25 will have a steady growth of uh, 10% when compared year on year from financial year 24. And for we FI24? are expecting that and the steel cycle has been very uh, like uncertain and volatile I would say and the amount of expansions that are happening around us in our different uh, at our different customers uh, plants the expansions are very promising so once they all kick off once they all start off I can't really uh, suggest that what would be the growth. No, uh, FI24, because whatever the 10% you are saying, it would be applicable on what you end up in FI24, isn't it? Correct. So, can Correct. you let me know what is FI24 then? FI24 should close around 330. 330 CR? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uh, what about means FI25, you said 10%, but uh, will you have any revenue from your new ventures, which is on the Definitely, bio- Stay, be, like keeping keeping that keeping that aside, only the traditional business of ours should should grow at a steady growth of 10%. Like we will, we will definitely kind of- try to uh, stretch it even more, but mm-hmm. that's the steady growth that we've always uh, showcased. Got it. And if you have to put some number to your new business, is it 20, 30, 40? What is that number? Uh, flux code wire and no, no, no. Bio, 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 take it is too soon, sir. I cannot uh, put a number for it. Okay. Then when you say that you are not uh, considering the new business, it's flux code wire. That's what you are saying that you are not yes. considering it in the 10%. Yes. yes, yes. What would be the number from then from flux code? Flux code wire, we should definitely make up to approximately 10 CR in the next financial year. Up to 10 CR. Okay. That will be over and above the 10% growth on 300. Yes. 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 Right. Which is 330. Okay. Got it. Which means overall you might end up somewhere at 390, 380, 390. Correct. Correct. And with uh, higher margins, I would believe. We are working on gaining uh, higher margins, which is why we have ventured into these new areas. So one is flux code wire, also promising us higher gross margins and biotechnology division, definitely much higher gross margins. Okay. 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 That's it. From we have, I would, I would just like to add on it. We have already tasted the top line per se and being the second generation i was very curious on having that technological uh, uh, power which we missed in our traditional work and i would we were really looking for something which would boost our uh, uh, work towards our bottom line so these these sectors these new areas will definitely do that for us okay and the capex that you are looking at is 10 cr isn't it uh, yeah, initially. Initially 10. And that 10 CR would be incurred next year itself? If I don't yes, itself? yes. That's what we presume in. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rane Mittal. Let's try Gagandeep once again. Um, operator, can you allow him? Gagan, I hope you can hear us. Please unmute and ask.
Okay, it looks like uh, he is unable to unmute. Um, operator, you can move him away from the queue. The next question is from Utkarsh Somaya. Yeah, Utkarsh, unmute yourself and ask the follow-up question. I request you to limit it to two. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again. Your inventory on your balance sheet has been going up since the March quarter from 14 crores in March now to around 32 crores right now. Hmm. So, are these uh, finished goods lying with you, uh, or have you? Is that high cost inventory, high cost raw materials inventory? Like, can you just give a? It is. It is just the raw material, as I had mentioned in the previous quarter. Also, we had uh, taken a little bet, and we had uh, taken a little move on building some positions in the aluminium side specifically, as we 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 did. Uh, see uh, upside potential in the prices of aluminium which didn't happen so yes it is majorly the inventory should be of aluminium and also the code wires yes so and what is the average cost of aluminium in this 30 odd crore inventory uh, 30 odd crore inventory the aluminium cost should be 50 percent roughly I'm, I'm saying i can check i can check uh, the exact number and let you know no, and the rest 50 would be? Code wire. No, I, when I, okay. And when I'm saying, what I mean by average cost is the average price per ton. What, at what uh, price have you uh, booked these in your inventory? Uh, aluminium. Aluminium average price of the, we are, uh, we are of course in the sustainable uh, uh, manner we are using uh, aluminium. So we are uh, consuming a lot of scrap. So this scrap is approx- costs us approximately 150 to 160 rupees per kg. And as opposed to that, what is the current price of it in the market? Current price keeps fluctuating. That's, that's what's been hurting us the most because if our, our finished, finished product, uh, is, is going at par with the LME. If you, if you're aware of the, uh, factor of LME, LME controls right. the prices of aluminium. Correct. So, uh, yeah. So our finished product goes at par with the LME, but the scrap that we purchase hasn't moved at all. Once, like even if the LME goes down by a hundred, uh, hundred odd uh, dollars, the prices of uh, scrap and our raw material does not move more than fifty dollars. And that's that's what's been hurting us. So the, this inventory will be used in your quarter four production, and will that? Yes, yeah, a so little in the quarter four. We keep we keep keep it moving forward and uh, uh, trying to keep it as low as possible. So this twelve percent gross margin will continue in quarter four, I believe, right? And maybe in quarter one as well. Sorry, the lower gross margin you're saying? Yeah, we'll continue for two more quarters, right? Given that you have high cost inventory and the finished good has not really. It should, um, it should definitely improve because we have cut down on aluminium, uh, uh, inventory, most of it in this quarter only. As I said earlier that 50% holds aluminium. I really need to check it, but we did, uh, like, uh, physically saying because I, I go around the factory and see it. So physically saying we have cut down on aluminium scrap a lot and we are trying to maintain a low inventory, but, but it, and it should improve. And the moment aluminium prices pick up, which, which I don't know, which should happen at any moment, it would, it would benefit us a lot. Okay. But there's nothing you can guide about. Uh, I, I can't say it like being like certain about it. I can't be certain about it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Utkash. Uh, the next question we have from Ankita Garg. Ankita, um, you have been allowed to ask a question directly. Please unmute and ask a question. Ankita? We can't hear you. Please unmute. Okay, looks like some technical issue. Uh, she has, uh, send the questions via chat. So I might go, as well go ahead and ask. Ankita's question is, uh, have you identified the clients and the output of the enzymes? Where would mm. you pitch this product and what could be the initial order book, uh, for the same? How, how does it look like? 
so initial order book again i would say it is too soon to uh, mention any any numbers on that but our initial clientele includes includes a lot of the detergent players because detergent is one sector which is uh, slightly i would say easy to penetrate and there is a lot of growing awareness of the usage of enzymes so detergent is definitely one of our most uh, like focus areas secondly we are surrounded we are surrounded by some very big uh, distilleries and we have some good relationships with the uh, with distilleries and we might see some uh, orders flowing in from there also so and 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 the uh, third part i would say is the like the promising future this in, this product holds like 2g ethanol the moment 2g ethanol from the government it starts gaining traction because it is under a uh, under rapid r&d right now and the moment it starts gaining that traction which is which is inevitably going to come we are going to face a lot of uh, like uh, steam and we are going to face a lot of traction in a, in the demand for our products thank you sagar the next question is what is the current capacity utilization of uh, both the segments of your company 50 to 60% poised poised very well positioned very well for the uh, future uh, demand thank you sagar the next question is uh, going forward how do you intend to keep up with the growth that the company has maintained till now sorry going forward how do you intend to keep up with the growth that the company has uh, maintained till now this is a question we have received via email so as a okay as a company i would say we have been uh, since since the time we have been incepted we have been growing at a very steady uh, pace and and we are very happy with the way we have uh, came forward and in the future to come out of that steady pace we have chosen these different lines to venture into and like it takes one idea for exponential growth and we totally believe that biotechnology area and even the flux code wire segment can give us that opportunity which will like which will result in a very good growth robust growth in the years to come we are very optimistic thank you sagar uh, we have a question from akilesh kumar how is the new segment related to welding material doing which we started trial production already so flux code wire is the latest technology in the welding area and it is gaining a lot of uh, uh, momentum it is a uh, import import substitution and it is being used in heavy fabrication areas so some key key players or key consumers of this product would be related to the railway sector and then the ship building sector warehousing building sector these are some areas which are which are highly interesting to us so this product seems very promising to us and we are we are very optimistic again with it Thank you Sagar. There are uh, no more open questions that I can see. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give a few seconds to see if there are any more questions on the line. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have uh, allocated for today. Please do send in your questions by email to us and we'll follow up to get those answered by the Sartak Metals management. Thank you all for joining us for the Sartak Metals Limited Q3 FY 2023-2024 earnings call. And as a reminder, today's call was recorded. A replay of this call will be made available on Alpha Street India's platform as well as our YouTube channel. Perfect. The so final transcript. This was a great session. Sorry, RC, I'm I'm interrupting, but this was a great session. I hope I hope you all look at the company with its past performance and the way forward for us looks very promising. Believe in us, trust in us. We have the ex- experience of 20 years in the business and coming into the biotechnology area. I'm leading the sector myself, and I totally believe that. 
at the end of the day, it is the business etiquettes and the business culture that it takes to flourish, not the segment that you venture into. Biotechnology has been a wild, uh, wild take for us, but that's what it takes for a company to grow exponentially. A steady growth would have offered from our traditional work, but we choose to go the highway. Thank you, Aloy. Thank, thank you for you this, uh, closing remarks, Sagar. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. A final transcript will be made available shortly on Alpha Street's intelligence platform. Thank you, everyone. Once again, uh, thank you for joining us. And Sagar, thank you for uh, conducting the call. Thank you. Over thank you. Operator. Team Alpha Street, thank you.